live. Oh my. Hello. Oh my. We are live. Oh. Woohoo. <gasps> but um, maybe Woo! we're live, but the people still need to come in and sit comfortably. So, mm -hmm. like, don't worry about it. Um, um, if you just arrived, go get yourself some water, go take a bathroom break, go enjoy the sun for a few seconds, not looking directly at it because you're going to burn your eyes. Not advisable. Definitely. Yep. But yeah, mm -hmm. so stretch and uh, yeah, we're going to start in a few minutes on a very fun stream about ink and paint and other cool shenanigans in harmony. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I'm joined with a very cool person. Who are you, <gasps> cool person? Me? I'm cool. Yes. <laughs> Hello, it's me, Renee. Um, I'm joined by another cool person over here with Seabird Brain. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. um, what are you drawing there? So today I decided to make, uh, to clean this little fella. Um, he, there are a superb, let me go forward so you can see it. So this little guy. <laughs> we'll have to, so we'll have to get superb. this description of what a superb is soon. Not now. Yeah. Later, but, mm -hmm. yeah. I, this is part of that. <laughs> A part of that, so we can educate everybody about the superbs, and <laughs> we'll let them do their job in due time. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think, yeah, I think people are are coming. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah, we've got we've got mm -hmm. a few people here in the audience. So let me just uh, start this lovely stream by some little streamer to cut. So, um, little reminder: no crude language in the chat. Please be respectful. If you have any questions, feel free to write them into the chat, either on Twitch or on YouTube. We, and by we, I mean I check both. <laughs> um, if you write a question and I don't answer it right away, don't, don't worry. Um, I'll come to it uh, eventually. Um, and yeah, we'll do our best to answer the question that you guys have. And if you guys don't have any questions, it's okay because we have a cool plan of what we're going to do today. So, you know how we like to have our streams with little themes in mind, so it's less confusing for everyone. And today's theme is ink and paint. So, what is ink and paint? Hmm. Hmm. Mm. What is ink mm. and paint, Renee? What is this? I would say that ink and paint, it's part of the process of the animation pipeline. Um, I would yeah. say that it's one of the most important parts because that's when we start to get a hold of the art direction that um, the people in the pre-production has established. Um, yeah. And it's like a closer step to what we're going to see at the final um, compositing stage as well. Um, normally, in campaign um, goes, with, and, and you can add along as well. Um, but in campaign, it's basically when you're adding the texture and you're adding the cleanup phase of the of your frames. And yeah, um, it's it's one of the most interesting aspects of the animation pipeline, because normally with rough, um, you know, you're you're getting a hold of the movement, but now with the cleanup phase, um, everything is like a little bit more adjusted. It's just basically you, you know trying to make it as close as possible to the rough, but it's still as polished as possible and clean. Yeah. Oh, and what is really important too with ink and paint and by the way you guys um ink and paint usually it means when uh, people made the rough animation and the model pass the ink and paints department job is to ink the drawing which means like you know clean them up like do the final inking the final line it can also mean to color the line and mm -hmm. then to fill in the gaps like fill in with colors a uh, little disclaimer um, the names will vary from production to production. So whenever you apply for something, always clarify what do you mean by that? Because some studios mm -hmm. are going to be like, oh, yeah, we hire for a cleanup. And for them, cleanup includes line, color, colored lines, and shadows. Some studios, it's good. The cleanup will just be to clean up the rough animation. So, you know, doing like a model pass and stuff. But generally, cleanup means to do the final lines on an animation. Inking sometimes means to color the lines, and paint would be to fill in the gaps. Um, so yeah, so ink and paint is basically the final lines and the final colors of a drawing. 
And it is a very important part of the animation industry. And sadly, I, I feel it's very overlooked. Oh, no, wait, underlooked. Yeah, underlooked by, by students, especially yeah. or people starting out in the industry. People are like, oh, I don't want to do cleanup. I want to do animation. But I mean, I don't know if you agree with me, Renee, but the cleanup department or ink and paint department is such a good department to get your foot in any kind of studio. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it trains you in, in, in terms of, you know, your draft, draftmanship skills as well. Oh, yeah. um, it'll help you get accustomed to different styles and different ways of, um, you know, cleaning stuff. So at least for me, cleanup is very, and then campaign is super duper important. Um, and yeah, it, it goes uh, overshadowed by other um, other roles in the pipeline. Um, just, I would say it's as the same as compositing. Like I rarely yeah. hear people wanting to do compositing, but it's super duper important at the end of the day. And too. it's super fun. I love compositing. I mean, I mm -hmm. love most things, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep, yep, yep. And and also yeah so so um, the compositing uh, not compositing <laughs> the ink and paint department <laughs> is uh, super important and just like any other department it is very uh, intertwined with all the other ones like you were mentioning so um, mm -hmm. when you do inking or like the the cleanup it it'll be super important especially if you're using the pencil tool to close your gaps. It is mandatory because then it's going to make everybody's job easier. So that's, uh, we're going to talk about how to better clean up using the brush and the pencil tool in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. And after that, we're going to teach some efficient ways to use the paint bucket. Hell yeah. Yeah, like like um, adding to what sees, um, Marie has mentioned. Um, <laughs> um, it's very important because it's like taking care of the <laughs> of the rest of the team. Because if you see like an open gap, for example, if I go here, I'm gonna make a little open gap. Boop. Oh, no um, <laughs> you try to paint it right, and then the, nothing is happening because um, at least with Tomb Boom, um, you're not able to do that. But there's a couple tools you can use a close gap, right? And then yeah. you can close it like that. And you can still have that open gap, but once you close it, now you can paint it because you closed the gap. Or the other option would be, um, you go over here, you see this little magnet thing, you select it, and then you um, select your little ve um, vector point, and then you put it here, and it's now part of it, a part of the shape. So it's really useful. Um, another tool that people use as well when it comes to cleaning, um, if you go to the pencil down here, uh, you see the line building mode. With the line building mode, it's basically a, a way that every time you make a line that it's really close approximately with the other one, um, it's going to automatically attach to it. And it's going to be re really useful when it comes to, whoops, wrong color. It's really useful when you want to close another shape as well. And then you can yeah. adjust it however you like. And then you can color it. <laughs> So tell me, Renee, what are you drawing at the moment? And how did you get there? Because I see your animation is from like, you had a rough that was made on, on paper? What? Paper animation yeah. is not dead? You can import <laughs> paper animation in Harmony and finish it there? Say mm -hmm. what? Can you tell me a little bit about your process there? Of course. So what I did was, <laughs> um, so I made this GIF. I don't remember when I did it, but I did it a couple... I would say a year ago, um, and this yeah. was my proposal on how the superbs are created. Uh, I what was thinking that a superb is basically like a creature that normally um, goes to people whenever they do like some kind of art sin. So, for example, if somebody doesn't name their layers, which in this case, oh, in this case, <laughs> I oh, Renee, you did not name them. <laughs> You didn't name um, your layers. Oh my god. I mean only oh one. My. Only one. I'm sorry. Oh no, I keep I hear them. Okay, no. <laughs> Anyways, um <laughs> every time you do an art sin, um, these little creatures might appear and they might give you a scolding. Um 
depending on the you know and depending on the arts and um if they see you that you didn't say properly maybe they're just gonna give you a little bit of mercy maybe a kick on the stomach but um <laughs> but yeah that's basically the superbs they are here to help us in the most violent way possible so name your layers <laughs> Same and legend often. says that mm -hmm. they come from the egg yolks of eggs. Exactly, they come from egg, egg yolks. So they're like which is the best example that are... we had to show you. What? Sorry, go on. Uh, no, 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 I was just gonna say quickly that they are like rotten eggs that are like trying to redeem themselves. <laughs> <laughs> no, you um, go. <laughs> but yeah, so we thought it was a good idea example to show you guys something simple to clean up mm -hmm. and color so i think yeah. using the pencil to <laughs> clean up is there a reason for that yeah like the um in harmony we had we got the brush tool and the pencil tool um the reason that i like to use the pencil tool a lot it's because we got some vector options that normally are very similar to other programs and that's really cool because it helps me not only i can work with my pencil i can also work with my mouse whenever you know i have it <laughs> uh, a mood of cleaning up, um, which, you know, that's what I found really cool about Harmony, that uh, sometimes I can use my stylus, sometimes I can use my mouse, and the product it really helps gonna prevent be... lots of tendonitis mm -hmm. from happening, by the way. Exactly, exactly. So right now I'm using the stylus, but because it's a little bit faster. But what I really like about the pencil tool is I'm going to make a line right now, and then we can compare the brush tool as well i'm gonna make another line with the brush tool as you can see here um we go with the contour editor tool which is the uh, white arrow on the tool side uh, of the toolbar oh something happened hold on give me one second there we go give me one second okay there we go okay so if you select the line made with the pencil tool and you use the contour editor, you're able to freeform it and adjust it uh, with with some Bessier points. Um, this is really cool and it's really useful for when it comes to you trying to set some specific shapes that you want to do um, quickly instead of drawing repeatedly. Um, with the brush tool, there's another way to do it, but normally the brush tool um, happens to be like this um <laughs> and it can be a little bit messy oh oh no <laughs> it cut there but you know it can get a little bit messy but with the pencil tool you get you know the the advantage that is a vector line as well and it, you can like zoom as much as you want and it's not gonna get <laughs> affected so yeah Ooh, that's pretty cool yeah 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 Yeah, that looks really cool. I'm, I keep looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank um, you. <laughs> and by the way, we're talking a lot about hand-drawn animation, but being good at ink mm -hmm. and paint, especially you know, like using the, um, the pencil tool, is really important, even if you're doing a rigged animation or cut out, because very often you're going to be asked to draw pieces within a rig. And I've been on production where it was a, a problem where the style would use a pencil line and people would struggle to clean up using the, the pencil. So they would use the brush, but then that breaks everything. So if you're on a production and the production asks for the brush or the pencil, it's important to respect it. The good thing, mm -hmm. however, is that if you use the pencil tool to draw something, you can always transfer these strokes as a brush stroke after. You can't really do the other way around, but you can always transfer your pencil to a brush tool. And uh, if you're done with that drawing after, we can, we can show it. It's pretty easy. And of while you finish this drawing, I'm just going to go check the chat. See if we have people telling us sweet things. Oh, we have some good questions. So uh, yeah, keep drawing. I'm going to check these questions. Okay. Um, okay, so Samurai, Samurai Amis, I guess, Ames, Anis, 
Samurai something <laughs> says if someone wanted mm -hmm. to keep their rough animation for final composition, which coloring shading method do you two believe is best suited for this style? Bucket tool or cell painting? Any helpful shortcuts? Um, okay, so I'll say. On my YouTube, there is a video especially about that subject because this is exactly the dilemma we had on like a daisy, which I was the harmony wizard for. That was my <laughs> literal job title. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so on the like a daisy short film, uh, which I'm going to link into the chat, we wanted to keep the rough, like the rough look in the final. So we didn't always, well, we didn't take the rough and just colored it because this would have been way too much time consuming because if you have your rough animation and you try to fill it with the bucket you're always going to have a bad time no matter the software because it's it's rough animation so unless you have a very very clean rough which is unusual um it's just not going to work um hmm, for some reason renee your screen disappeared from the stream hmm if uh, whoever is um, handling the stream uh, hear this, uh, the screen uh, disappeared. <laughs> um, but I'll keep answering this question. Wait, Renee, are you still there? Oh, no. I lost my host. <laughs> Not my host, my guest. <laughs> um, oh, I'm my here. guest is Hello. back. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's OK. We had a little thing. I was like, mm, the screen disappeared. OK. So what I was saying is that coloring the rough with a bucket is never gonna have never gonna be like a good option. However, if you have if you have the patience and the budget for it, if you want to keep your rough animation in final and you want to color it, you can do so with the brush, like just painting like they did in the old days. But let it be known this is gonna be really, really time consuming and we don't recommend it. What I recommend if you want to keep a rough look in the end is to still do, do a clean pass on it, like an mm -hmm. actual cleanup pass, and you're going to, either with the brush or the, the pencil, whatever suits you best, because having a clean pass is going to make it easier for you to use the bucket tool. And if you want to keep your rough a compositing, you can always just take your rough and slap it on top of it in compositing. There's many cool things you can do with that. It's a very cool um, style to work for. So I hope this answer your question and i'm gonna go to the next one from king and eve who asked when i color the skies and cloud it looks like the base color and when i try to add shadows and light it doesn't give the right effect as a cartoon background my question is red brush will help me to give the right effect of shadow hmm. i'm not sure i get the question but it does remind me of something a wise man told me in a workshop Mr. Nathan Fox, who's an amazing background, uh, well, an amazing painter. He does many kind of paintings, just not just background. But mm -hmm. when he does digital paintings, he always says it's not about the brush. You can do wonderful thing with just <laughs> the basic round brush at a lower opacity. So I don't think it's about the brush. I think it might be about the technique and the direction. So my recommendation for that would be to try and find at least three good references of someone who did something similar, maybe from a movie, from a book or something, and try to see how they treated the, the sky and the background and stuff to see if it would be a style that you like. I'd say go mm -hmm. get references. Do you have any other advice for these two questions, Karani? Yeah, for the sky one, I would say also um, the if you want to go... Of, like a head with the shadow and stuff like that. Normally the shadow comes from color as well. So a lot of color theory can be on play over here. Um, you can also like take pictures during the day. You can see the difference between sunset, nighttime and midday and morning. Um, and you can play around with those things um, because I um, something that is really important when it comes to shadowing, um, because this is something that I see a lot um, early on it's that they use a lot of gray and that's not the best way oh, right. to do it sometimes um it's always really good to play with color um always complement your colors with cold and warm colors and you yeah, um a lot of reference like um 
Mariev mentioned as well. So I, I would say a combination of that, like color theory and references could help you a lot uh, to reach what you want to do in your in your sky. Yeah. And yeah, remember, like Renee said, shadows are not black or gray. <laughs> and to a certain extent, they are also not always blue <laughs> because, you know, when we mm -hmm. start out, especially doing digital painting, everybody shades with a black layer at multiply, right? And then people just live it up and they're like, well, I will use a dark blue layer in multiply because I leveled up, which is great. It's better than black. But if you make your shadows blue because someone told you to make them blue, you're missing a very important point there. If you mm -hmm. draw a illustration of someone standing outside, yes, oftentimes the shadow can be tinted blue, but that's because what makes it blue is the environment, like the, the sky. Yep. Uh, and the light bouncing off and stuff. But if you're like in the middle of the forest, maybe you don't want to give a blue tint to your shadow. Maybe it'll be a bit more uh, purplish or brownish. So, so like it's it's a lot of uh, science behind these colors. So find reference <laughs> and go read about color theory. It's so great. Mm -hmm. Like usually warmer colors will 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 look way different than colder colors. And sometimes a warm shadow that is not blue. <laughs> It's going to be amazing. And you can even have cold lights and stuff. So pretty, pretty interesting color theory that you can look into. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I see for your cleanup, you're doing a lot of copy pasting and editing. Uh, mm -hmm. There's many tools we can use for that, including the select tool. The uh, contour editor can also like stretch a bit. There's the the warp tool and stuff. Um, can you give us a few different examples of different tools you can use to sure. cheat, let's, cheat let's your go. way around? Because sometimes just stretching the lines, like if you, if you just copy paste a piece around, it'll look copy pasted, even if you keep skewing mm -hmm. it and stuff. So sometimes you have to be a bit smarter. So do you have a few examples? Exactly. Um, so over here in, in the contour editor, um, we got the perspective, the envelope, um, which you know, it's basically the 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 warp tool. Um, if you select it, um, you're gonna get this, right? Um, and you can like skew it however you like. <laughs> um, it could be really useful if you want to, you know, do a specific like squash and stretch kind of things. Um, but if you want like something more like ref but wait, I, I wouldn't say go, refined, but it's much go, more specific. Mm -hmm. There's an important thing yeah. about that tool. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes if you're selecting it and you move it and then you try to add uh, sections to it, like more sections, uh, depending on the computer, sometimes computers don't like it because it does require a lot of thought process from your machine. So okay. always be okay. aware when you use that tool, maybe save before, because if you have a very heavy image, it can be too much for certain computers. So <laughs> let it be known if you're, you're going to use the warp tool, always save before. <laughs> I mean, always save yep. because saving is great. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's true. And for everybody here, this is a, another reminder, friendly reminder. If you want to have autosave activated as well, you can go to preferences. I'm not sure if you can see the window. No, the window is not showing. Oh, let's see. No, it's not. Well, if you press on edit preferences on the general <laughs> tab, on the, the, it's basically right in front of you, uh, like, it's like the first options. There's going to be one called autosave, and you can you know set the interval of minutes. Very Actually, important. I can I can do this. I can I can do a little sheet. <laughs> I'm gonna snip this. Oh yeah, we here. see it now. Oh, I okay. See it. <laughs> Yay! So, autosave. <laughs> Amazing. I'm going to put it here. <laughs> Yay. OK, cool. Cool, cool. OK. So yeah, like like uh, Marie have mentioned, if you go here, you can adjust the points on how much you can move it. And it's I would say that this is you know, for certain types of things. Um, normally, I like to use more the contour editor because I have a little bit more control. Um, so for example, if I select here, the head, let me move this out of the way. 
here you go. Um, yep. You can move uh, certain points. You can also, um, sometimes more points can make the drawing heavier. So normally when I'm cleaning up, I try to make that as least as possible. Um, that also accounts for rigging. Um, if you have a shape that has a lot of those points, um, it could lead up to make the rig uh, break easier, easily or make the rig heavier as well. So in this case, since th this is hand-drawn and we're doing something quickly, um, I'll let it pass. But normally, I wouldn't let this pass. Um, the way that I would solve it is, um, I don't know if, if you have done this before, uh, Mariev, but if I select like this part that has like one, two, three, four, five of those points, and I select like in between them and I start shaking, they just disappear and only say there's Yeah, like this is a technique. Now. This is a harmony mm -hmm. technique called line nudging. And this is harmony's line way nudging. to optimize your strokes because okay. you nudge the line. Yeah. I love it. It's one of my favorite things. Like I discovered it by like uh, by accident and I'm like, oh I can clean easier like this. So this is another way to you know keep your shapes even more polished and less prone to break easier because you know less points to ma uh, manipulate so that's another thing um let's see perspective so with perspective is you know depending on <laughs> if you want to do like maybe a shadow kind of thing uh you can play with the sh uh, with the perspective so here <laughs> i literally put the superb like literally on the ground and if i go here Boop, boop. I put the little guy over here. He has his own shadow. There. <laughs> Look at him. So perspe perspective is really useful for that, too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there you go. Oh, no, I was... <laughs> my microphone was at mute. Ah! Um... Oh. <laughs> I was saying also that the, with the perspective tool, the great thing is that you can set mm -hmm. it as a lattice or as a perspective, um, which have a little, little difference in how it works and stuff, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see if we have other questions before we go on. Let's see, let's see. There is no questions for now. Oh, okay, okay. Um, okay, so about cleaning up with the pencil, there's a few things I want to share in case, you know, people were not there or anything. Um, actually, with most of the tools in Harmony, if you use the Alt or the Control shortcut, on your keyboard, there is a lot of things you can do. So I recommend trying it out. So either Option and Command on a Mac or Alt and Control on a PC. And there's a lot of things you can do with many tools, including the Pencil tool. So with the Pencil tool, if or with the pencil or the brush, if you draw and as you draw, you press on Control or Command, it's going to mm -hmm. try to close your shape automatically. Let's do it. Ooh. Yeah like this I made you have to draw and then press control <laughs> yeah there you mm -hmm. go yeah that. <laughs> <laughs> that's like the new creature droid. new creature yes. la creatura it's, number it's two their keep that don't it's delete their it new put pet. it somewhere oh my god Wait. <laughs> <laughs> it's saved <laughs> <laughs> wow so yeah, the uh, control button is going to close your shape either on a brush or on a pencil, which is super helpful if you're doing like buttons or splash water effects or something. Very, very cool. Mm -hmm. And if you go to the properties of either the brush or the pencil again, there's a thing called autofill. And if you close your shape and you draw with it, it's going to automatically fill it with a, the color you're using, which again can be very useful. There it is. Da da. da. <laughs> so if you mix that with the control button, it can create some very cool things. 
And now where uh, the pencil actually gets better than the brush is that um, with the pencil, you have a bonus feature called the trim extra lines. It is, you know, located with the other icons into the pencil properties. But so if you activate this and you draw a shape that is shaped like a little fish. Um, yeah, this one. If yep. you draw this, it's going to automatically cut away the two little uh, edges. There it is. Why does it keep one of them? Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you, <laughs> can, you can use it with or without the autofill. And it can be very, very helpful for lots of different kinds of cleanup. Oh no. Fine. Happy Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that's very, very useful. And now we're drawing like teardrops with it or <laughs> drool, but it can also be very useful to create kind of very round uh, circles. <laughs> oh my god, this one is, has not you. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you use this and you, you know, there's a trim extra align button and on its right, there's like a little add-on you can have. add. And if you're not the best at drawing circle, it's okay. Keep practicing. I recommend practicing on paper uh, to be able to draw perfect circles. But this tool can help you out because it's going to take the the shape you have, trim the extra line, and try to make it a bit more into a circle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the button right beside the trim extra line. That's what it does, and it's pretty useful. Let's see. Ooh. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. It does re get, get, require some getting used to it, but it's it's very useful. Oh, there you go. No, but you have to do it like you did before. You're like, oh, that's perfect. So yeah, you draw like the like fish shape thing, and it really helps. Uh, with or without the autofill, it works with both. So I use that a lot for buttons and irises. It is very very useful. <laughs> I just noticed something. Hold on. What? <laughs> no, hold on. Give me one second. I. I made the logo. <laughs> the Timbun logo. You made there. a what? The Timbun logo. There. Oh, it's... Oh my god, you did. <laughs> Magic. I mean, it's pretty easy to draw. You nailed mm -hmm. it. <laughs> um... Oh, yeah, that looks cool. Um... Okay, so <laughs> now that we have this, um, out of the way. It's just a very helpful way to do your, your cleanup. Don't forget also into the properties, both in the pencil and in the brush, you have the draw behind feature that is very useful to add details. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Woo! Wait. Woo! Not, wait. Yeah, so that's yeah, why yeah, you're yeah, like, adding like, details to your stuff. Woo! <laughs> um... Okay, okay. Little tip here. Speaking of colors, a lot of time we have characters and they're going to have details uh, inside the characters, either stripes or little thingos. Oh, that's pretty. Mm -hmm. um, and very often, if the character has a black outline, uh, we want the details to... Um, we want the de de details color to go under the main line art. And yes, you can use the select by call. Uh, no, you can use the draw behind feature to, you know, just draw them behind as you go, which is great. But sometimes when I'm in a hurry, what I do is I just, um, let's say that this super had like green stripes because it's Halloween. If you draw a bunch of stripes and then you use the cutter to cut them, um, like the, the, the green lines will appear on top of the black one, which is kind of ugly. <laughs> Can you do it for a second? Yeah, let's see. Um, let's go Add a few here. like fire stripes on his head. <laughs> <laughs> fire stripes. Okay. Oh, damn. Woo -woo. But not oh. with the draw behind tool. Yeah, yeah, let me take that out. 
There we go. Okay. And if you cut these with the... No, no, but don't color them. Just leave the, the line art. Okay. okay. And then if you cut them... Mm -hmm. Um, if you zoom, you see like the, the red stripe appears on top, which is ugly. So mm -hmm. if you had used the draw behind, this would not happen. But let's be honest, nobody's perfect. And we always forget to draw behind, right? Mm -hmm. So instead of fixing it drawing by drawing, I'll be honest, very often, if I know that this color is always to be put behind the black line, what I like to do is getting the apply to all frames button. Um, in the tool yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Apply, yeah, this and uh, select by color, and then you can just select by color the the reds, mm -hmm. and this will select it across all of your drawings. And then if you right click, okay, you're gonna see. Well, I mean, you don't. Yes, you, you guys don't see it, but it will be there. There's gonna be a thing where it's like arrange. And you can put something in front or behind. So I would send to back, and it would send yeah. all of my red stripes to the back of my character, which is very Ooh. useful. I've used that technique more often than I'd like to admit. <laughs> but yeah, if you can save your butt, I'm happy it does. <laughs> mm -hmm. And if you're a fan of shortcuts, um, the way to do oh. this, it's with Control Shift Page Down. And if you want to put exactly. it on front, would be Control Page Up. So I'm going to do it side by side. So I'm pressing control shift page that, uh, page up as you can see, it's popping back. Um, but if you press control shift page down, it'll do the same. So in that arrange tab, you're going to get those as well. Yeah. And uh, speaking of colored lines, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about colors because we've got some question about it in the chat. Um, I would like us to talk about <laughs> naming your colors <laughs> in harmony and how important that is mm -hmm. um there's mm -hmm. many different thoughts on the matter but from my years and your years also in the industry we know a little bit about it and when we talk about naming your palettes in your swatches um, um i mean it, do you have anything to say about this Renee? because i'm gonna write in the chat what is the recommendation of but, course, um, yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> when it comes to productions, when it comes to productions, um, right? If you're planning to do, you know, a couple scenes, a couple shots, and you need to like uh, transfer those palettes to your coworkers or your teammates, um, it's really, really important to name those because, um, you know, whenever they're doing a cleanup scene or something, they need the correct colors. Um, because if you're like color picking, sometimes there are going to be some kind of artifaction between the screenshots and it could affect the, the final version at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So it's really cool. Uh, with Harmony, it's really cool because um, if you go to your file, your folder file in each um, shot that you have, or file, I should say, um, in right in those folders that includes in every um, shot that you have, a file that you have, um, there's going to be one called palette. And you can make as much as palettes as you want. There's quite a few options that you can save. And you can like um, import them in other scenes as well. Um, that's also really important because whenever you need to do compositing or something like that, the compositors need to have that information as well in order to, for them to manipulate some stuff or they need to change something for the lighting or rendering kind of thing. Um, so yeah, um, naming your colors are important. And I would say something, another thing that I um, heard from rigging people, it's that um, you should name like if, if your character has a color for their skin, but mm -hmm. also a similar color for something else, it should be a separated color as well because they could include some kind of mask that could interfere with the face or it can interfere with the hands or something else in the character. Um, that's about it that I have in mind. <laughs> Yeah, and that's perfect. And when we talk about palettes, so palettes is the thing that holds all the swatches together, right? So the palette, as I wrote in the chat, um, the naming conventions that we recommend at Toon Boom is 
to go like this. So there's always the character. Uh, there's always like the type. So is this a character, a prop, an effects? Then there's the name of the character. Maybe not the full name, but like the short version of the name. Then the outfit and the time of the day and the version if you need. This is because when you are in Harmony, the palettes, if you're on a server or if you're in anything, like the, the palettes are usually in alphabetical order, which means that if all your characters have CH at the front and if all your FX have FX in the name at the front, it means that by default, all your characters palette will be together and all your FX palette will be together and all your backgrounds, I don't know, any like props will all be together. So it's very, it makes it very easy to find them. Uh, so that's for the palettes. So for example, if uh, I, I set some examples into the chat and these would be like in alphabetical order. So you'd have always the type, the character, the outfit. So if it's just pajamas, is school uniform. And then you have the time of the day. And this is important because sometimes you're going to have your character in his pajamas at daytime and at nighttime. And there are going to be two different colors. So then they're going to show what, right uh, um, next to each other into the list. Mm -hmm. um, and when it comes to the name of the color, like Rene was saying, it's very important to name it accordingly. So if your character wears a green shirt or if their character's skin is yellow, don't call that color yellow, <laughs> because what if down the production, the director says, you know what, the skin color needs to be blue. You're screwed mm -hmm. because the color's name is yellow and then it's going to be blue, right? So don't do that. Um, always call it by what it is. So skin and stuff. And on top of that, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, again, show it in the chat, but um, the naming we recommend is to always use the type of the line followed by the description. So I'm going to show you this. Um, there we go. I'll post them into the chat. So for example, if you have a character and they have a body, tongue and stuff, so you're going to write L underscore body, F underscore body, the L being for the line work, and F being for the fills. Now, some people, some studio, I know I've worked on some production. Uh, I think I, yeah, I worked, I worked on some production and instead of L and F, it was I and P for ink and paint. Mm. But ink and paint is not used that much simply because a capital I looks like an L and it's just very confusing. So I am strongly against using ink and paint for these, but who am I, right? Anyway, I always use L and F because it's really clear that something is a line and something is a fill. And uh, yeah, keep them organized, keep them nice, yep. and you should be good. Okay, Rene, you have a perfect drawing for the next thing I wanted to talk about, which is the ink tool. I don't know if people in the chat are familiar with the ink tool, but it's a very unique tool to Harmony, and it is also useful, but also misunderstood. Mm -hmm. So that drawing is perfect, the one from before. Uh, this one? No. Or this one? The one where it looks like an egg. <laughs> okay. This one. Yeah, okay. Because then the if you color the egg yellow, like a uh, if you give it like a light color that is like a dark yellow or something, uh -huh. you don't have to name Let's, it for now. Uh, I'm not going to judge you. It's just an example. <laughs> yeah, but it's <that's> perched well. <laughs> <laughs> so if you use the line, uh, the ink tool, the cool thing is that if you click and drag across the top and bottom here of your egg yolk, if you click and drag, you see it's going to kind of unite your lines together, which makes a very clean and cool finish. Um, the difference between the ink tool and the repaint tool is that the ink tool, like we saw before, knows where to stop. <laughs> the repaint would have just repainted the whole yolk, which in that case is okay. Um, and also the repaint tool kind of respects the orders in which you drew the line. So if you drew the yolk uh, before the, the whites, 
then if you repaint the yolk, it's going to show behind the egg whites. So that's not always uh, what we want. Um, so the ink tool by default, if you color something, it's always going to show on top of the rest, like we see here. So if uh, just for the example, um, you color the you color the egg yolk first. Yeah, let's do that. Boop, boop. There you go. Yeah, you see, if we try to do the egg whites, then it appears on top. So let it be known, if instead you don't want it to appear on top, you can always press on Alt and click, and then it's going to shove the line behind all the others. <gasps> Ta-da! Well, it's going to shove them behind everything else. So if you did your color on the same layer, it's also going to put them behind. <laughs> but it's okay, Renee, because you can just select your, your white with the select by color tool and just put it behind everything else. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. yeah. It's always better to put your color on the color art, but when you make mistakes, there's always ways to solve it. Yep. Everybody's humans. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, there's already just 10 minutes left. Time goes so fast. Oh my God, <laughs> you're so fast at cleaning this. It looks amazing, it's... by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's been, I've been wanting to clean this for a good while. I'm happy that I'm able to do it. Whoop. Precious, precious, superb. I'm gonna. Yeah, that looks great. Thank you. I'm gonna take this. So, out. chat, if you have any questions, you have like five minutes to ask them because it, the stream is gonna end soon. And, uh, you know, I... we're making good progress. Mm -hmm. I would like mm -hmm. to showcase one of my favorite favorite tools in Harmony. Oh, please do. Um, I was I about think, to ask think, you what you wanted to talk about. I think I always mention it every time I stream, but I still want to show, give the gospel of the overlay brush. Spread the gospel, Rene. I love the overlay brush. Okay, so let's ah, do something Ah, yes. Quick. I was about to ask to talk about that. <laughs> let's do something quickly here. Okay, let's put it here. So we can do the example properly. So right now, right, we have like a darker yellow. Um, I'm going to copy it so it doesn't affect the, the line art. Um, and what I'm going to do is that I'm going to lower the gradient a little bit. So it has that extra, um, it's like a, like a grading kind of feel. So with the overlay brush, um, AKA my favorite tool ever, um, it has, um, <laughs> it has changed my life. Um, so you go to the brush um, um, on the toolbar on the brush option and you press it and you're going to have two options, right? You have brush and a stencil brush. So you select stencil brush and like many tools in Harmony, you go to the tool properties bar, right? And if you go here down, um, there's going to be this little icon. And if you press it, you're going to get overlay and repaint brush mode. Um, we're going to talk about both, um, but normally the one that I always choose is overlay. Okay, so I'm going to choose overlay. And then I'm going to choose, let's see, which brush should I use? Uh, I like this one, brush on cloth. I like it because it's it has like a little fussy and random texture to it. Yeah. Um, so I want to give a little bit of a shading to this character, so it's not only flat. So what I'm gonna do is I selected the stencil brush, I selected the overlay brush mode, but before I select my favorite one, we're gonna um, touch quickly on the repaint one um, because the repaint one um, can be a little bit tricky sometimes to use. I would say it depends on the situation, um, but it, and and Mary F can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think much people use it, use it that much. Um, but there might be, you know, some kind of use for the, for them. So I'm here, you know, doing my drawings and I gave it a little bit of shading. But the thing is that it's a little bit lighter because it's respecting the, the gradient that I decided to use. And it's not using the brush, it's using like a flat brush. But what happened is that if I select it, it's gonna delete um, the, the yellows um, from it. So it's like some kind of like a mask, but not really. Um, so this could be useful maybe for shadows from time to time, but not, I would say that the overlay one is 
the better option right now. So let's go with the overlay one. Again, stencil brush, overlay, and I'm gonna give a little bit of shading to this little guy. As you can see here, it has like a it gives like a grainy texture to it. It, yeah, it gives so you green. like a painterly style. I love it so much. Um once I learned this technique, I haven't stopped. Like I have to use it in everything that I do. <laughs> it's one of my favorite things ever. <laughs> Like, look at it. It went from flat to a little bit of oomph to the art. And so also, so you can even it. use the protect color features of Harmony to mm -hmm. make it so like you could just affect the yellow and not the egg white, for example. So it's super, super cool. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And the great thing is that also over here on the black arrow, you go by select by color, right? And you select over here. It's only going to select the shading. So if you want to like start all over again for certain things or if you want to move it a little bit more um you can you do that as well Yay! <laughs> and if you're <sighs> curious about what Exciting. we just talked about i have a video on the subject that i'm gonna post in the chat so please check it out mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, oh my god, that's just five minutes left. Time by goes by so fast. Um, mm -hmm. it's so fun, it's so fun. <clears throat> yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. I think we could, I think I would like to mention one thing before we go it's about the gradients. Yeah. So, if yeah. you don't mind, would you have like a little gradient? Maybe we can use it on the egg. Of white course. Or something. Oh, hell yeah. Okay, let's do it. Let's go over here. Okay. Let's go over here. Maybe we can make like a gradient that goes from dark blue to like lighter blue. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, so I went to the color, right? Uh, yeah. The the palette that it's called Prop Egg Yolk, right? I selected to the. Mm -hmm. I, mean, mm -hmm. I said palette, but I should have said swatch. The swatch. So, in order, I, I'm not sure if you can see the window here um, on the stream. But in order to select gradient, um, you double click the swatch and you're gonna get like a multi wheel color window, right? Oh, yeah, it's appearing. Okay, cool. Um, right before alpha, you're gonna see solid and gradient. That's how you can do gradients in harmony. And you can do multiple, but for this example, we're gonna use two. Um, so once we got our gradient set up, we're going to go to the tool properties and we're going to go over here to the contour editor, right? And there's an option right down below that it's called edit gradient and texture. With this tool, you can adjust um, whichever direction you want the gradient to be po uh, positioned. Yeah. It's really useful when it, when it comes to, you know, some kind of like lighting, compositing and stuff like that, extra stuff for the character. Um, um, but Sometimes the animation is going to be still. So sometimes if you are like using that um, and you correct me if, I, if I'm wrong, but every time you use that, the color with the paint bucket tool, it kind of changes the perspective. So in order to change that, yeah, it's doing it right now. It automatically goes to another one. So what normally um, fixes that is you go over here. <laughs> yeah, and you need to select tool. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You go with and the select tool. Store your gradient. Exactly, which is over here. Store color gradient. So let me fix it again because it already um, <laughs> spawned to the other side. So I'm going to put it over here. Yeah. A little bit to the side. Yeah. Maybe a little bit down. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you go over here and then you select the drawing, the, the, the color, and then you go over here to store color gradient. Boop. So on the next frame, if I do it, right now it, it doesn't have it, but I'm going to do it, fix it now. It should be doing it. Oh, actually, no. <laughs> you need to select this part. You see this window over here with the bucket tool? It's it's called Use Stored Color Gradient. So once you select that, it automatically will do it. And it should be doing it now. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so now it's respecting the position that I already made on that um, 
um, be, uh, on that frame before. So this is really useful when it comes to shading certain things. Let me do it again so you can see. It's respecting those um, parameters that I already said on two frames before. Um, this is really useful for cleanup at the end of the day. Oh, yeah. And coloring. Woo! OK, yeah. And I think that will be it for today. So thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, I think I think it was super instructful. The chat was super happy. And um, yeah, if you had, do you have anything else to add? Uh, yeah, uh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anything you want to share um, in the chat or something? Mm -hmm. Any project I would, you want to I would definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would love to share it. Um, let me get the link quickly, and then I'll 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 announce it. So Rene works uh, from Puerto Rico. He does amazing work. He directed mm -hmm. a few shorts. He's been working a lot uh, with me uh, for Gang Grumps animation as well. So, you know, we do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can all find our stuff uh, either on YouTube or some links that Rene will share in a second. <laughs> well, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm getting it. I'm getting them. To do, to do. Okay. So right now, my current project is, uh, besides the grumps from time to time, that I do little gigs with them, um, I'm also working on a, it's like a, I would say shorts, animated shorts that are published on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. Um, we are currently on episode two right now. They're called Slimies. Um, you can find them over at, I'm gonna send you guys the the link for them, over at Slime. If you look for Slimy series, you might find them. Um, it's one of my favorite projects that I've been working for about three years. Um, the pilot is available on YouTube and everything else is available on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, so I'm going to be sending the links right now. And yeah, I hope you guys follow and, and tell me what you think. I'm going to put them here on the chat. OK. I'm going to put them here too. OK. I'm going to go here. Instagram. I lost Twitch for a second. <laughs> here you go. Um, let's go to here. And we had Learn with Andy who was asking, how long does it take to create five minutes short on average? There is no average and five minutes is not short, just saying. Usually if you want to try to make a short, go for 30 seconds or a minute and you'll see mm -hmm. how long it takes. Because five minutes is a huge commitment and it is five minutes have nothing short in it so let it be known it takes a lot of time to do animation and if you want to know how much it takes you to do a five minute short try making a 30 second one multiply that by 10 and you might have a very broad estimate <laughs> and with that <laughs> uh, i think we'll have to say goodbye because i have to run to another <laughs> task in my work day <laughs> <laughs> so, have a nice day, everyone. Bye-bye.